guys, so I'm here to talk to you all about dragons. <laughs> so I have a video on my channel where I recommend to you books that I love which feature at their centre fairies because I love a fairy book but there's something that I'm sure you all know I love even more than a fairy book and that's a dragon book. Dragons are my all time favourite fantastical, mythical, magical creature and if a book has a dragon in it I am 100% more likely to read it than I was beforehand. You may even recall that quite a few years back now I did a video all about books with dragons in them. However, I have expanded my horizons when it comes to the subgenre of dragon lit, as I'm going to call it. <laughs> um, since then I've read some more books I loved, I have more recommendations and probably just more to say on the topic. So I really like the way that the fairy video came out and I know a lot of you have gotten a lot of recommendations from it so I thought it would be fun to do an updated dragon video. So all of these books are fantasy, some are like a fantasy with a hint of sci-fi as well. They all feature dragons either as the main characters or as a large part of the plot and all importantly have sentient dragons. When it comes to dragon literature, I want a dragon who can communicate. It might mean they have a telepathic connection to humans, it might mean that they've even interbred with humans or, as one of the books in this video turns out, are literally the only characters, so just spend the whole book talking to one another. I'm not a massive fan of books with dragons who are just basically like oversized beasts who breathe fire and fly, a bit like Game of Thrones. That's just not my cup of tea, so that's not the kind of dragons I'm focusing on in this video. And with that being said, I have 12 books to talk about you here, some for adults, some for young adults, some for children, all of which I love and I'm looking forward to recommending to you. So let's kick things off with the most dragonish book of all dragon books, and that is Tooth and Claw by Joe Walton. Now the reason I say this is the most dragonish book of all dragon books is because there is literally no human characters. Okay, there's a little nod to humans in there, but it's negligible. It's irrelevant, really. This book is about a society that in large part mirrors um, 19th century Britain but all of the citizens, all of the uh, people in this society are dragons, which means you have at the centre of this book a family of dragon siblings whose father passes away at the very beginning, pushing them all into awkward situations, particularly the female children because like say in a Jane Austen novel, without a male guardian they cannot support themselves and they are dependent on whichever men hold the property or the wealth in their family and they have to deal with their new situation. We also have have the brothers, one of whom works in the city, the other of whom took a job in the church and already you can see it has a lot of similarities like I said to 19th century England and like an Austen or a Trollope novel. I say that because there's a lot more say like political intrigue in this story than necessarily Austen usually has but for it being a book that heavily mirrors like a 19th century setting and a classic, it doesn't just feel like dragons have been put there in place of humans, it feels like a well-developed society in which Joe Walton has made allowances for these characters being dragons. The, the society has changed because of them and she creates this incredibly well-balanced, well-rounded world and it's incredible. I've never read anything else like it. If there was more books where all of the characters were dragons, I would be there in a heartbeat and this is one of my absolute favourite dragon novels. It's also a standalone which I think is pretty rare when it comes to fantasy in general and as much as I would love more books set in this world, I'm able to accept that it's just this beautiful piece of perfection in itself and I just love it. It's absolutely wonderful. We then have the dragon book that really cemented my love of dragon books. Now I'd read books with dragons in them before but when I was in my like pre-teens I believe the book Aragon came out which is the first in the inheritance cycle by which is the first in the inheritance cycle by Christopher Perlini, a young adult high epic fantasy series. In fact when I last did this video there were four books in that series but since then um, the author has actually brought out a collection of short stories set in the same world after the events of the main four books so it's an even more expansive series than it was before and I'm still holding out for a little bit more of Aragon, Sephira and the world of Alagasia in the future. But if you love a complex fantasy setting with multiple races, we've got dwarves, we've got elves, we've got um, something called the Urukai, humans and of course dragons. If you love magic and corrupt power and lots of different like 
political bodies moving against one another and good versus evil and a young boy coming of age and finding a dragon egg in the forest and this is the book for you because it has all those things. Now this follows Aragorn and his dragon Sephira who I mentioned he discovers the egg of in a forest. He, he lives with his uncle and his cousin, he's a farmhand, a pretty ordinary life in a kingdom that is ruled by an evil king who is also seemingly the last dragon rider until of course enter Aragorn and Sephira and this puts them in an incredibly dangerous position because everyone is vying to catch them or win them over to their side because suddenly they're a threat to this king. And Sephira is hands down my favourite fictional dragon of all time. She is incredible. She's a fully formed character in her own right and her relationship with Aragorn is one of the things that I really think makes this series stand out. Their friendship and their companionship and the family they build together is stunning and I come back to the series time and time again. I've read all the books multiple times and I cannot recommend it more highly. But if you like the 19th century, I actually have two more recommendations involving dragons for you, oddly enough. This seems to be a bit of a, a niche subgenre within the dragon lit genre itself. And one of those is Heartstone by L. Catherine White. Now this one is directly a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. So it takes the uh, basic plot arc of Pride and Prejudice and throws in dragons. I need more of this in my life in general. More people need to retell classics but as if there was also dragons. Because I can tell you already it would make them ten times better. In Hearthstone we have your recognisable Regency era setting with a family who have only daughters and no sons plus a strict class system which feeds into the role of the dragons. So the aristocrats in this Regency setting are dragon riders. They're the ones that are bonded with dragons from a young age in order to protect society. And there are other magical creatures, some of which are friendly, some of which are threatening such as griffins and the dragons and their dragon riders will travel to parts of the country that are under threat. So enter the Darcy and Bingley characters who come with their dragons to visit the women of this household who, like I said, are under threat from griffins. If you like your classics, if you like your Regency era novels and you also like dragons, this is a must read. And you also like the idea of the women in these classics getting to play a more active role in, say, saving their country then this book is also for you. It's part of a series, although the initial story arc of Pride and Prejudice is wrapped up in book one and you get to see this world expanded upon in book two. But I did say I had another 19th century dragon book to recommend and this is the Temeraire series or the His Majesty's Dragon series by Naomi Novik. It goes by two different names depending on whether it's published in the UK or the US. But this is an epic series of more than 10 books. So, so much adventure and excitement to get your teeth stuck into. We follow British Navy commander during the Napoleonic War who, whilst out at sea, manages to discover a dragon egg. I feel like discovering a dragon egg is one of like the most quintessential ways of beginning a dragon book and I'm here for it. But he discovers a dragon egg and dragons again exist in this society and there's a special subsection of uh, the British army who are the aviators during a time before aeroplanes existed and they fly dragons and dragons bond to specific people so of course they're not sure what to do with this egg and then it unpredictably hatches and bonds to our navy commander who had never planned on becoming an aviator in his life. He's quite happy as a navy officer like he has his life planned out and it all kind of gets turned on its head but again he develops this incredibly strong bond with the dragon Temeraire as they're introduced to a new world for both of them. Of course this is his world he's been alive a lot longer um, but he has to learn the ins and outs of this this new section of the British Army that he knew nothing about. And Naomi Novik manages to seamlessly rework the history of the Napoleonic War with dragons threaded throughout it and it's so fascinating and fun. And again, Temeraire is definitely up there with one of my favourite dragons of all time. And I love his and Lawrence's relationship again. I think I am very much drawn to like the kind of like close-knit bond of a dragon and their dragon rider and that friendship come like familial relationship. It's always so nice to read about. We then have a book that blends a bit of fantasy and science fiction together, which is In the Vanisher's Palace by Aliet de Bedard. This comes under a very specific type of dragon, which I also have another book to mention in this video of, which is dragons that can also take on human or 
close to human form. So they're not always bound to their like huge can't come inside a house size um, that, norm that a normal dragon would be. And in the Vanisher's Palace is also a loose retelling of the Beauty and the Beast fairy tales. It's a really interesting combination of lots of things. Plus the dragons very specifically take the shape of a Chinese dragon because the image of dragons in actual sort of folklore and fairy tales differ depending on what culture is creating them. So this again is just a really nice slightly different dragon novel from a lot of the other ones I've read. But this is set in a world that was ravaged by war and the book itself actually touches on a lot of themes like colonialism and cultural invasion and that makes it and that just adds a whole other layer to the story. But we follow one young woman who is taken as a part of like an exchange for another person's life by a dragoness. This dragoness has two children that basically need a governess and she decides to take this young scholarly woman from her village. They strike up a deal with one another but it also means that she cannot travel back to her home a little bit like your traditional Beauty and the Beast narrative and she is sent there and starts to learn about um, the dragoness and the life that she has on this ship cut off from the rest of the world and her relationship with her, her two children and some of the mysteries that are going on there and of course they strike up a relationship so we have so many things I love there in one place. It's a dragon novel and it's also a female female romance so if any of those things appeal to you I would highly recommend that one. Whilst I mentioned female female romances in fact I have another book to recommend to you and that is The Queen of Eflaria by Effie Calvin. This is the first in a uh, four part series at the moment with the dragons in particular playing a large part in books one and three and that's because we follow different protagonists in different books. So in book one we follow two princesses who are betrothed to one another as part of an arranged marriage for a political alliance between their two kingdoms and um, the, the kingdom that this book is set in which our first princess travels to is currently under attack by dragons. Now that premise might not initially seem to you like the kind of dragon book I usually like. I don't like my dragons to just be evil which is another reason why say like The Hobbit isn't my favourite dragon book but there's so much more going on under the surface than you might first expect. I don't want to give away any spoilers but Effie Calvin doesn't just paint any one creature or person in this book as purely evil. Everything's much more complex than that and as the different um, characters get to know one another they learn more about why what is happening is happening and through that the dragons also become more complex and we learn more about them and especially in book three when we return to the two princesses of book one after taking a brief excursion in book two the dragons are super central to the entire narrative and I loved the way they were incorporated and I loved some of the dragon characters that we got to know. And even though I don't want to give any spoilers, I do have to say that something in book one that happens is just the most incredibly adorable thing ever and I love it. I do feel like I should mention The Hobbit though briefly since I said I would mention um, books with talking dragons that I like and Smaug is a talking dragon. Again, like I said though, the reason that The Hobbit isn't my favourite dragon book is because Smaug is just like blanket evil and that seems to be the consensus on dragons really in Tolkien's Middle Earth. And that's just not my cup of tea. I do love The Hobbit. I think it is an absolutely wonderful children's book full of so much imagination and some really fascinating characters. Bilbo is absolutely brilliant as are all of the dwarves and Gandalf. So I would still recommend The Hobbit. I don't think you need me to summarise it for you. Um, it's the sort of children's prequel to Lord of the Rings. But that's the reason I'm not really spending much time on it. Another children's book series that I do love though and does have uh, dragons of all walks of life in there is the Last Dragon series, the first book in which is The Fire Within. And the dragons we first encounter in this book are so unique because they are basically made out of clay. We follow a young man who is a university student and takes up lodgings in um, the spare room of this woman's house with her um, young daughter who's sort of like primary school age and this woman creates dragon statues but of course as the book goes on we find out that these dragons aren't just statues they're actually filled with I guess the fire within which brings them to life and our main character basically ends up 
bonded with one of these little dragon statues that come to life. Are you surprised by that? I think we've learned what I look for in a dragon book at this point. <laughs> but then throughout the book he learns more about dragon lore, the history of dragons, where all the original like life-sized big dragons have gone to and why it's just these tiny little dragons that exist now. And of course there's an antagonist out there and the dragon world expands as the series goes on. And this was another one that really just got me into dragons as a child. It was one of those books that just made me fall in love with them as a magical creature and as a concept and those relationship ties between dragon and companion and actually the more I talk about the series I really think I want to go back and reread it because it's been quite a few years now that I'm verging on 28 since I read it so that might be something to do this year. We then have the other book I mentioned which involves dragons that can take human form and that is Seraphina by Rachel Hartman. This is the first in a duology and then she has at least one other book which is set in the same world but is its its own entity and Serafina is all about a young woman with um, a sort of mysterious past she's a little bit different from other humans but even she doesn't completely understand why and she is a music teacher so she ends up taking on a role at the palace to tutor the young princess and what's unique about the world that she lives in is that there are dragons, full life-size dragons, but in the past there was a war between the humans and dragons and now if dragons want to live amongst people they have to take human form so they walk around like ordinary humans but they all wear bells to indicate that they're not human so everyone knows that they are dragons and they are not allowed to transform back into their huge dangerous original form and Serafina's music tutor is actually one of those dragons and it's all about tension between dragon kind and human kind back, beginning to stir back up again and um, lots of like political plotting and upheaval and learning about Serafina's past and who she really is and it's so much fun. I very much love it as a geology. I don't read a lot of geologies and it just felt like it was the perfect length between both the books. I loved book two in particular when we get to encounter even more magical creatures in this world and the way it all wraps up was perfect and I just think again this is an excellent book to check out. Future Jean here. I am so ashamed of myself because whilst editing this video I realised I had forgotten to mention one of my all time favourite fantasy series and favourite dragon books of all time. It was on my list. I don't know how I forgot to talk about it when I was last sat down here chatting about dragons with you. So I'm sitting down to film another video and thought I would briefly interrupt this one to let you know that there is another book that should be on this list and it is of course The Dragon Keeper by Robin Hobb. This is book one in Robin Hobb's Rainwild Chronicles which is a four book series all set in the realm of the elderlings. So Robin Hobb has a variety of uh, published novels and quite a few of her books are set in this world that she's created, the realm of the elderlings, and within it there are various series. You do not have to start with the first ever series that came out. Yes, there may be little spoilers about the world in general if you read the Rainworld Chronicles before you read the first series, but from a personal perspective I prefer just to read the series that I have the most interest in and the most enthusiasm for when I want to read them, rather than necessarily having to like work my way towards them just because of minor spoilers. That's completely up to you, but that is just to clarify that you can start with this series if you want to, you don't have to, but if like me, you love dragons, it's a great place to start. We follow a whole host of characters in this series, both dragons and humans, and some humans who are a little bit different and have sort of dragonish aspects to their appearance because of the place that they were born and the way the land affected the way their bodies grew. And at the very beginning of the series we are about to witness the first dragon hatching in a long long time of a whole group of dragon babies that have been nesting in this world. When they are born they're not the dragons that anyone expected them to be, they're weak, they're sickly, they're not these like grandiose impressive beasts so the community kind of just want to get rid of them and ignore them and pretend they didn't happen so pick a group of people from their community particularly those that look a little bit different who are treated a little bit different and seen a little bit differently to escort these dragons to find a new home somewhere up the river where they don't have to look at them and we follow those dragons their dragon keepers and a few other characters including members of the ship that's escorting them and a lady scientist who is obsessed with dragons and she is one of my favorite characters she's like one of my favorite fictional characters she's brilliant and she really adds something to the series and it's brilliant there's so much going on but it never feels excessive the 
characters all have their own complex personalities and you really get invested in each of their storylines and they're all very different but complementary and I just love 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 this series. Robin Hobb is just a beautiful elegant writer at that and she creates superb fantasy worlds. I do however have two honorary mentions that don't necessarily fit into the remits, I stipulated at the beginning of this video but I still wanted to briefly mention them. So these dragons aren't necessarily the kind of like sentient protagonists that I talked about at the beginning but I still wanted to mention them because I do really enjoy them. And the first one is The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. This is a graphic novel, there is two currently out and I believe a third one is on its way. And this is just the most beautiful concept in this world. Dragons grow tea leaves from their head and each different kind of tea dragon grows a different kind of tea and those have magical properties when you drink them so there's like a jasmine tea dragon and a chamomile tea dragon and it is the cutest, the most adorable thing. The illustrations are stunning. I kind of just want a nice big print framed on my wall of those dragons because they're beautiful. I think there's even a card or board game based around the illustrations which I should definitely look into getting. And on top of that it's just full of the most lovely diverse characters and relationships and friendships and it's just wonderful so I had to mention it. Plus, I want to mention that there is actually a Terry Pratchett Discworld novel that features dragons. I love Terry Pratchett's Discworld. It's one of my favourite fantasy series of all time. And as you may know, one of those involves a dragon, which is Guards Guards. Now, the Discworld itself is made up of multiple different series following different protagonists. And Guards Guards is the first in one of those series, which follows the Ankh Morpork police force. And in this book, someone releases a dragon from a book of magic. And the main premise of the storyline is that this dragon needs to be slain and they're trying to find the person who is destined to slay this dragon as it sort of rampages through Ankh Morpork and the Discworld. As dragons go, not my favourite dragon book, but as fancy books go, it's up there. I love Terry Pratchett's sense of humour, his world building, his creativity and his characters so I just wanted to give it a brief little shout out there at the end. But those are some of my favourite dragon books if you're interested in some of my favourite fairy books I will link that video down below. I still have tons of dragon books on my TBR otherwise I would love to hear what other dragon book recommendations you have for me in the comments down below. I am always looking for more fancy books with dragons in them. They are like I said my favourite magical creature but whilst you're down there why not let me know what your favourite magical creature or like fantasy subgenre is as well and until next time happy reading I'll see you again soon bye guys